here. Um, at this time, we'll move to item 6.3, consideration of Council Member Fox's request to adopt resolutions establishing policies for the display of flags, including the pride flag at City Hall. And at this time, I'll turn this item over to Council Member Fox. Thank you so much, Mayor. Uh, as soon as I was elected in 16, I brought forward a proposal for a city-sponsored forum supporting diversity and condemning hate. At that time, it was not supported because the council felt that there were no incidents in our community and therefore no need. However, over the past three years, there's been an increase in hate speech and hate crimes. In response to these events, Irvine has held press conferences and have issued statements uh, standing up for our communities. But we need to do more to unify our community and support love over hate. This is why I propose flying the pride flag during pride month of June. We live in a world where governments ostracize, punish, and execute people for who they love. Irvine has a vibrant L LGBTQ community which deserves to feel protected and safe. A pride flag at City Hall sends that message. This is a nonpartisan issue. I think I have a slide of uh, President Trump's tweet. If you can put that up. Hello. So even our president has supported LGBT Pride Month and recognizes the outstanding com contributions of LGBT people. And if I can have the next slide. Our embassy, American Embassy in Tel Aviv, has flown the pride flag. So what does it mean to our residents to have the pride flag flown in the city? Just read a few outtakes from the emails we've received. Displaying the flag is an acknowledgement of the contributions of LGBTQ people to the city. More importantly, it is a symbol that we belong here in our home community, which has not always been accepting. I was raised in a small town that was not welcoming to the LGBTQ community and that had serious impacts on my self-worth and mental health. It was one of the reasons I left home to come to California. Please support your entire community and take your stand on the right side of history. And another, because of the tragedies that have been inflicted on individuals and businesses of lesbian, gay, bi, trans people, it is important to support and raise awareness of these residents' contributions to the community. It is important to us that the city of Irvine recognize the Gay Pride Month of June and display the gay flag at City Hall. They deserve the dignity and respect that displaying the flag represents. I ask that we, as a council, join major corporations such as Disney, Banana Republic, Starbucks, Verizon, Nordstrom's, Budweiser, Bombas, Sephora, Chipotle, Reebok, Calvin Klein, Express, Kine, Nike, Adidas, Target, Ralph Lauren, Gap, Macy's, and T-Mobile. And I ask that we, as a city, join other cities like Anaheim, Costa Mesa, and Fullerton, and unite our community and respect love for love. And I ask that we move to fly the pride flag and celebrate our LGBT community during this month of pride and oppose the hate that is out there. Thank you. Thank you so much, Council Member Fox. And now we'll turn to public comments. We have 24 speakers or so. So at this time, Jennifer uh, Mirmack, if you'll come forward, you each have three minutes. And I request that you stick to your three minutes, if you please would. Uh, Nathan Searcy will be next. Thank you. Welcome. And can we please state for the record your city of and your address, or at least the city you're from? Madam Mayor, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, Council Members Khan, Carol, and Fox, my name is Jennifer Mermack. I live at 639 San Leon, Irvine, 92606. I have been a resident of Irvine since 2006. I am also the parent of a fantastic teenager who just graduated from University High School. 
He also happens to be transgender. I am here to support displaying the rainbow pride flag, rainbow pride flag at City Hall. Displaying the pride flag is more than mere symbolism. It is a very real gesture that conveys welcome to the members of the LGBTQ community and their families. I hereby request that the city council choose to display the flag in a gesture of inclusion to all people, regardless of sexual orientation or gender identity. Thank you very much for your consideration. Thank you for your comments. And then Annie Lee would be next. Hi. Hi there. Thank you, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, Council members for having me. Uh, my name is Nathan Searcy. I'm a field representative for Assemblywoman Cotty Petrie Norris, who represents Irvine. She has asked me to come here and read this statement on her behalf. On behalf of Assemblywoman Cotty Petrie Norris, I'm here to express her support for the LGBTQ plus community and for the city of Irvine's plan to fly the pride flag in celebration of Pride Month. This June marks the 50th anniversary of the Stonewall Uprising. The Stonewall Riots served as a catalyst for the civil rights movement in the United States and around the world and for the gay rights movement. The rainbow flag celebrates a spectrum of people inclusive of many different backgrounds, emblematic of the very values that make our country strong. Assemblywoman Cotty Petrie Norris believes we are all equal, wherever we're from, whatever we look like, whoever we love. Today we are proud to join you to celebrate the LGBTQ plus community and to celebrate Pride Month. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Uh, uh, Laurel Davida, Davila, followed by Jeff Letourneau. Oh yeah, I'm sorry, you're first, I apologize. Um, dear honorary members, um, I am here today, my name is Annie Le, and I am a student at the University of California, Irvine. Um, I'm sure that the thing that we all have in common in this room, regardless of backgrounds or identity, is the desire to be uh, to love and be loved in return. Um, so I remember three years ago coming from high school, my mom encouraged me to attend UC Irvine, not just any UC, but in Irvine, because our city is the safest large uh, city in the nation, and I hope that we can retain this title for years to come. Um, including better protections of LGBTQ communities and ensuring their wellness. Um, as the current student body president of UC Irvine, I sit on the steering commi uh, committee of the SB 179 Gender Recognition Act, uh, which is a Senate bill that ensure um, non-binary people can get birth certificate, California driver license, and state issues ID with the correct gender marker starting this January, and I'm, I know that the UC undergraduate applications also have developed and uh, will include non-binary uh, options starting in fall 2019, but I'm sure there's still more to be done. Um, this committee that I sit on, all of this is to ensure that students are include, feel included at UC Irvine and are protected from harassment and discrimination to all know that they are worthy of love and deserving of respect, humanity, and a place to be free, and to exist and to love without persecution. Um, Costa Mesa flew the pride flag, Laguna Beach is too, um, so why don't we? Uh, the pride flag doesn't, alone doesn't bring back the people we have lost to transphobia or homophobic violence, or the people who we have lost to suicide as a result of years of harassment and bullying, but it is a promise that we will do better in the future. It's more than just a piece of cloth. It's to show visibility and unity. It's a sense of safety and welcomeness. Um, to exist in this world is that they are valuable when existing in this world at, and that they matter and cannot be erased. Thank you. Hello, this seems to be a regular here. <laughs> Hi, so, how are you? Hello. Uh, I am on Twitter, and I am a part of the hashtag LGBT Voices. And what we do is we educate people during the month of Pride, but also uh, continuing educating people about the LGBT 
QIA community. And as that A, uh, I'm an ally. And what I have learned over the past two years, and they mainly brought me in just for my digital expertise, is something that pretty much makes me cry every day. Um, I see mothers uh, that are, you know, finding out on Mother's Day that they have a transgender child. And I hear about um, situations where uh, people have to take a certain kind of a medication in order to be able to have um, relationships with other people, and it costs 2000 a month. So um, HIV was the issue for today. And when I went through it, and I, I was being reminded of what happened in the time of Reagan, um, when AIDS first became, a, a, we, we became aware of it, and how it was left on the floor, pretty much, uh, because of the discrimination. And so it, it wasn't addressed soon enough uh, before so many thousands of people died. So I think that to me, at least, for this community of friends that I have made, I haven't even met them, you know. Um, I, I haven't physically met them, but I feel like I know them. Uh, I started thinking when I was driving over here, first of all, thank you, Melissa, for this. I appreciate this a lot. But I started thinking what it would mean to one of my friends to drive by their city hall and to see that flag. How would that impact them? And I can tell you, it would mean a lot to them. It would mean that their city supported them and protected them. So thank you very much for my time. Thank you very much. A city clerk, I, my timer's not working, so my timer, our clock is not working. It's, okay. okay, there it is. It doesn't work up there. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, Jeff Letourneau. Um, uh, before we start, I wanted you to note that I walked the two blocks to get my cane so that I wouldn't have to endure any more of your insensitive and caring and inappropriate remarks about whether people are disabled or not just by whatever visual thing you, you said. So, I'm saying, uh, if I may, I said the front seats were for disabled, and I say that in meetings. So there's nothing derogatory okay. being said we'll to you or anybody that. else. Okay. They're Very just good. disabled right. seating. Very good. Okay. So and anyway, let me let me uh, start by saying that inevitably, city to city, as we have these presentations, here is what happens. The first question asked is, why is it the responsibility of any government agency to show um, any any sort of a commemorative flag or whatever? If we do it for this one, we have to do it for dozens of others, etc. And in this city, the answer is very clear. And and please excuse me if my my comments are not. Um, as, as kind as, as some might like. But in this city, it's very clear for one reason, and that is because of Mayor Shea. If you were to Google Mayor Shea, and, and somebody in the city, the kid, just come out and look at what comes up, let me, I, I wanna read to you um, something that happened in the city. First of all, when there were no federal laws, no state laws, almost anywhere in the country, this city was one of the first in the nation, and, and in the world, perhaps, to come up with an ordinance that protected LGBTQ people. And then um, a group of people who allied with uh, Lou Sheldon and the Traditional Values Coalition um, and, and supported by and, 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 and participated in by Christina Shea put Measure N on the ballot, which had no other purpose than to strip this community and only this community out of protection. Now, how shameful is that? So I don't know how much time I have left, but I'm, I'm going to read the comments. Have another uh, minute. That, You're welcome to continue. I'm sorry. Thank you. Commentary. Urban Human Rights Ordinance. Yes. Passage of Measure N would put an end to special rights for homosexuals and lesbians by Christina L. Shea. In July of 1988, the mayor and the city council enacted a human rights ordinance that has embedded within the structure a clause referring to sexual orientation. The human rights ordinance, because of the inclusion of this clause, gives special legislative protection to homosexual 
bisexual and lesbian communities. The law was passed in spite of exhaustive year-long study by the Human Rights Committee, the one from the Traditional Values Coalition, I might add, that found no discrimination in the city. And with regard to the 300 concerned residents who attended to the public hearings to voice disapproval of its passage. Recently, the Irvine World News stated that, sadly, the law, regardless of whether the authors were well-intended or not, simply pandering to a narrow political interest group has indeed been divisive and expensive. It may yet be litigious and destructive. I agree it is unwise to pander to the narrow political interest groups. Certainly qualifications for a minority status with its affirmative action Your time is up. Thank you for your comments. Well, you, we appreciate you, it. You get, you get the point. And oh, things, I know. I was there 30 years ago. Yeah, Thank you. Yeah, some and your, some of your change. facts are not accurate, Thank actually. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so we have Harvey Liss, if you want to come forward, and then Lauren Johnson Norris. First, I'd like to thank Oh, by the way, I'm uh, uh, the same Harvey Liss who spoke uh, earlier uh, at this meeting, although I've lived in Irvine now uh, about an hour and a half longer than I did before. Anyway, I'd like to thank uh, Council Member uh, Fox for putting this on the agenda. I think it's a very important item, and it gives the city an opportunity to correct an incredible misjustice that happened, injustice that happened uh, just 30 years ago in 1989 when uh, Measure N for, for Noxious was, uh, was passed. That was really a dark day for Irvine. And I do hope that the City Council now does the, uh, the obviously correct thing and uh, approves uh, Council Member Fox's wonderful two resolutions. I guess the one needs to happen in order to implement the second one. So anyway, thank you very, very much. Thank you for your comments. Um, okay, so then we'll go to uh, Lauren Johnson Norris. Welcome. Thank you, Madam Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, and Council members. And especially thank you, Council Member Fox, for agendizing this item. My name is Lauren Johnson Norris. I'm a longtime Irvine resident and business owner. And I'm here tonight to tell you that I support the flying of the Pride flag in the month of June. It sends a clear and unequivocal message that Irvine is a welcoming and inclusive place where everyone can live free of persecution, judgment, and discrimination. Now the flag matters because it's an important visual symbol of support for our LGBTQ plus community. This community has worked hard to overcome discrimination and battled stigma for decades, but the struggle is far from over. Hate crimes still occur, and the fear of these threats experienced by members of our LGBTQ plus community here in Irvine is real. Flying the pride flag during the month of June sends a strong message of solidarity with our LGBTQ plus community, and it also sends a message that hate is not welcome in this city, and that all of our residents are welcome here. So as an Irvine business owner, as a mother, a lawyer, and as an ally, and as chair of our Community Services Commission, I ask you to support this item. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Um, at this time, we'll move to Michael Wright and Annie Wright. Are you both you know, two separate addresses? Good evening. Madam Mayor and Council Members. My name is Michael Sean Wright, and I call Santa Ana home. When I first moved here to California over 15 years ago, I called Irvine home. I found it welcoming, beautiful, and very pro-business. Uh, flying the uh, pride flag is pro-business. Uh, I serve on the steering committee for the Human Rights Campaign, which is the world's largest LGBTQ advocacy organization. Uh, every year we conduct an equality index and we um, audit the top companies around the world. And when I look at companies like Ingram Micro here in Irvine, they worked really hard last year to improve their score from 85 to 95. They invested resources, time, and effort into helping their workplace feel more inclusive. When we look at businesses from around the world that want to move to inclusive cities, one of the things that they look at is what is the environment uh, of the city. Um, I've always felt that Irvine is not only open-minded, 
but it is, is fair and equitable. And flying this pride flag is a real symbol of your outward show of support. Peter Levy, who is the regional director from the ADL, the Anti-Defamation League, wanted me to share with you a couple of thoughts. For over 100 years, ADL has been a voice for the vulnerable as ADL fights all forms of bigotry and discrimination, defending democratic ideals and civil rights for all. Today, there are many groups that are more vulnerable than they've been in years. ADL works to provide a supporting voice through our teaching, educating, and training through our investigation, research, and advocacy to support all marginalized populations. Seven months ago, in the wake of the horrific murder of Jews on worship on the Sabbath in their synagogue in Pittsburgh, a synagogue here in Irvine was vandalized and spray painted with expletives. The message was clear that violence could have just as easily taken place in Irvine. In response, the Irvine mayor and the police chief stood together with many faith leaders of Irvine and publicly said, there is no place here in our city for hate and that Irvine is a community where all belong. You sent that message of solidarity to the Jewish people when they were attacked. The city of Irvine must send that message to all people, regardless of their religious, race, nation of origin, ability, gender identity, and sexual orientation. Today, lesbian, bi, gay, and transgender folks are sent the message that they do not belong. They are unwelcomed. This is the city of Irvine's opportunity to send a positive message of belonging simply by flying the pride flag at City Hall. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. And Anne Wright, is that correct? Nice to have you here. My name is Annie Wright, and I am the Vice Chair South of the Democratic Party of Orange County. I'm here to speak in favor of the city of Irvine to display flags as a way to support various causes and communities. This is not about the city of Irvine having policies that discriminate against any group. Irvine is a very diverse community and most people love living in Irvine and we thrive here. This is about Irvine acknowledging that certain groups have had their civil rights curtailed and that laws alone do not rectify these types of discrimination. This is about Irvine acknowledging that hate crimes have risen nationally, um, especially against LGBT community as exemplified by the murder of Blaise Bernstein in our own backyard last year for being gay this is about Irvine standing in solidarity with the civil rights of groups to say that we protect their rights to live dignified lives. We do not need to agree with how people live their lives, but we need to respect and protect their choices as provided for under the law. So I ask that the city of Irvine display flags to signify inclusion and protection for not only its citizens uh, or residents, but also to send an explicit message that we stand for integrity when we express our concerns for others by flying these flags. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comments. Thank you for sticking to your three minutes. Appreciate it. Um, Peter Warnock, if you'd like to come forward. followed by Joshua Block. Is it Block? Yeah, Block. Hi, how are you? Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. Uh, my name is Peter Warnock, and I'm a resident of Northwood. Um, I'm here to oppose the, the motion tonight uh, to raise the flag on our, our uh, public flagpole. Um, I think that we can celebrate pride without flying the flag on our public flagpole. Uh, I think this is really identity politics, and uh, it's a movement that's not wholly inclusive, and I, I don't think it represents Irvine. And, uh, you know, we already have a diverse community that condemns hate, and so we don't need to put up a flag to say that. And um, in some ways, the movement is fractured. There's, there's groups that uh, 
eight other groups, and, and they don't, they're not wholly inclusive. They, uh, you know, they don't respect things like um, uh, people that are Jewish or uh, people that support Trump, for example. Um, and so uh, I also, I, I don't think it's uh, equitable to other groups. I think it's unfair to other groups, and I, I think it elevates this pride movement other, uh, over other special interests. Um, I think that the flagpole out front should be reserved for old glory. I mean, that's, that's our symbol of freedom that represents the law of the land, um, and that's, that's what I think should remain uh, the policy of the city. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comments. Hi, good evening, Mayor Joshua, Shea. nice to see you. Welcome. Nice to see you, too. <laughs> um, well, first of all, thank you for this opportunity, Melissa Fox, to have this on the council agenda. Um, ooh, this is my speech from something else. <laughs> Why don't you read it? It might be interesting, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, it seems that I lost my speech, so I'll just go from the heart. So, uh, my name is Josh, and I'm gay, and I've lived in Irvine my entire life. I feel overwhelmingly like welcomed by the community, by the people, and by my family and friends. Having the support of my family and friends was incredibly helpful in becoming who I am today. I wouldn't be here if not for my friends and family and the support they gave. I'm asking the city of Irvine to also extend that support to people who don't necessarily have that. I have friends who don't have the same support system, the same welcoming communities. There's people here in Irvine, my peers, who have been disowned by their family for being gay or being part of the LGBT community. I have a friend whose family held a funeral for him because they were dead to him because he loved someone else of the same gender. These instances occur here in Irvine, and I just wanna ask you guys to respectfully fly the flag, the pride flag, to show that people have support in their community that people are welcomed in the community to show who they love and who they support. Um, my full speech was a little better and a little longer, but thank you for listening for me, to me, and I genuinely hope that you uh, fly the pride flag. Happy Pride Month. Thank you. Thank you. did a great job. Thank you. Uh, Joe McLaughlin. Let's don't, have, let's don't have this outburst like that. Clapping's fine. Uh, Maria, Minnie, after that. Joe, where are you Lachlan, coming? Where are you, Joe? Oh no, you come on down oh. then. I, I always let's don't don't let's don't do that, please. Joe, oh Joe's here. Here he is. Okay. Hi, yeah, I'm Joe McLaughlin. I happen to live in Northwood at 54 Bamboo in Irvine. Folks, you're not required to list your address, but I am here strongly supporting this resolution. Uh, I will do note that there's actually two uh, parts to it. Councilmember Fox, I think, has wisely uh, asked the city to adopt the policy for flying of flags. Uh, and the second part is that the city uh, fly the pride flag. Um, I have to be Catholic uh, and broadly uh, Christian. Many of us are, many of us are not. And that's, that's cool, of course. Uh, as, as a Catholic, one of the things I ra was raised to believe was to love my brothers and sisters. Uh, Flying the pride flag is literally, I think, the least this city could do, considering its history from 30 years ago when, an, unfortunately, a discriminatory measure was passed. Um, so let's show love for our brothers and sisters, uh, for those of us who happen to be Catholic or Christian and of all the faiths, uh, and please support this uh, flying the pride flag. Thanks so much. Thank you very much. And then um, Maria Minnie, hi, welcome. Uh, good evening. Um, so I'm here to tell you my impression about the power of symbols and representations. I, um, I, I was originally born in Italy, and the first time I came into this country, the first thing that I noticed right away was the amount of flags that you have in this country. We used to have flags out only when the, nation, the soccer national team plays in the World Cup. That's when we pull out the flag. But that was a strong message because uh, I, I got it. It was a symbol, but I understand what it meant uh, for someone to wave the flag in this country. So symbols matter. So, and uh, likewise, this, this past week, my kids uh, um, graduated from uh, elementary school and high school here in Irvine. And when we received the yearbook, 
to see the yearbook full of faces from all different uh, uh, ethnic groups. For someone that grew up in a very homogeneous society, it was an incredible sign of hope. Again, this was just an image, but to me it meant so much. And I know it meant a lot to my kids. So, one more example. Um, as a Democrat, I'm very proud of the work that Katie Porter is doing. One of the first videos that she put out after she was elected was a video of herself as a mother. As a mother. And I felt represented. I felt represented as a mother of two kids to having someone in Congress with small kids being there. What I'm trying to say is that the symbols of representation matters a lot, even if it works maybe in indirect ways. So for someone who belongs to the LGBT community, to see a flag waving um, from an institution like the City Hall, it means that this city and their institution have their back. And for someone that maybe had to walk the path of hiding themselves because they didn't feel welcome or they felt that they need to hide their own identity, to know that actually the institution proudly showed their support means a lot. I'm sure it means, I, I'm not in that situation, but I've been in other situations where to see someone sympathizing with my identity, who I am, it was important. So I really think that this, um, I really hope that this council will take in consideration the various uh, uh, groups that make Servine a great city and they will approve the, the uh, proposal to have the, the, the rainbow flag waving. That's all, thank you so thank much. Thank you for your comments. At this time, I'll invite Steve Greenberg down and followed by, um, is it Brooke Lays Campbell? Campbell, did I pronounce that? If you'll be in the wings, that'd be great. Good evening, Mayor Shea, members of the council. Um, Steve Greenberg, chair of the Transportation Commission. First of all, I'd like to just um, start out by saying what Mr. Letourneau said about Mayor Shea is just ridiculous. I've known her for years and she's just, she's the most caring person. So I just feel that, you know, what he said is just totally out of bounds. But I'd like to speak um, out against flying the gay pride flag at City Hall. Our flagpole should be really reserved for our federal, state, and local flags, the three flags right there. And I simply do not believe in flying a non-government commemorative flag at our City Hall. We're reaching a slippery slope by allowing this. If we do allow this, the city will have to let the Confederate flag to be flown perhaps the NRA flag if people want that, the Black Lives Matter flag if certain people want that, and even the communist flag if certain residents demand this. If we do not um, permit these flags to be flown but the pride flag to, to be out there, we can be setting the city up for future litigation. I believe that we would also be alienating many religious folks from all faiths in our community who might be uncomfortable with this. Again, if we allow the gay pride flag to be flown, perhaps other less desirable groups will also seek to have their flag flown and sue the city if we refuse. If a private enterprise like um, Council Member Fox, like Macy's or T-Mobile, if they want to fly the flag, that's great, that's fine. But let's keep um, our flagpole for the American flag, the state of California flag, and our local flag. I just feel that that really makes the uh, most sense. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you very much. You're welcome. And Brooke, welcome. Thank you, and you did a great job on my name. Almost nobody ever says my name correctly the first time. Oh, well, that's good. I usually mess them up. I hate no, to say I that. I was impressed. Okay. Um, so first, I'd like to thank you, uh, first of all, Council Member Shea, I mean Fox, for putting this on the agenda um, and for taking the time to hear our comments. I've been a member of the Irvine community for 30 years since my family first moved here. Um, I was a high school student here. I was a college student here. I was a newlywed and a first-time homeowner here. Um, I was a mom of two children who now attend Irvine schools. But most importantly, I think my role has been as a teacher here in Irvine. And I have taught at University High School at Lakeside Middle School, and I currently teach at Northwood High School. And I think the thing that has always stood out to me about Irvine is the three things that make people want to live here. One is that it is a safe community. The second is that it is a community that celebrates diversity. And the third is that it is a community that has amazing schools. Um, so I think that one of the things that flying the pride flag would do for our community is celebrate the diversity that we show in things like the Irvine Global Village Festival, 
um, and other ways that, like the banners that you have about celebrating diversity. I think that when we look at the safety of our students, we have to look at the safety of our LGBT students. Not only do they report, um, and I'm gonna lay some sad and startling statistics on you like I would do with my students. So 29 to 32% of IUSD students in grades 7, 11, 7 through 11 who were surveyed in the California Healthy Kids Survey reported being harassed due to race, ethnicity, gender, sexual orientation, or disability. 14% of our students in the 2017 Chick Survey reported that they were considering attempting suicide in the previous 12 months. So that's 14% of ninth graders and 19% of 11th graders. So we know that our students don't feel safe they feel like they could be harassed by other students. Um, we also know that students often are rejected by their religious communities and by their families. And according to Chapman University's assessment of the 2015 Chick Survey, countywide over 7,000 of our LGBTQ youth seriously considered attempting suicide, which was three times more than the non-LGBTQ youth in the county. We also know that in a study conducted by San Francisco State University in 2009, gay and transgender youth who experienced high rates of rejection from their families were more than eight times more likely to attempt suicide in their lifetimes than gay and transgender youth from families with low or moderate rejection. Another thing that was found in that study was that when these youth had even one affirming or supportive adult in their lives, their risk for depression and suicide was significantly reduced. When our community shows that we are welcoming and that we will celebrate everybody in the community, it helps keep our youth safe. We have a mental health crisis right now. Thank you right for now. your comments. Your three minutes is up. Oh. Thank you. Mm, <laughs> sorry. Good job, Teacher, Good job. you give me a microphone, I'm going to talk forever. <laughs> That's why I'm here to control it. Okay, so Robin Gurian, uh, followed by Jacob. Let me get my glasses on here to make sure I get that correct. Uh, Rabakov, you're next after Robin. Thank you. Hi, I'm Robin. Uh, you've seen me before. I live in Irvine. And um, I got to tell you, I, I, when I heard about this and that this was supposedly controversial, it stunned me because I have been to so many city council meetings and as um, I, 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 it, I'm just shocked that this is a controversy to anybody on the city council. Of course, we, the, the city should display, should fly the pride flag and I mean, yes. And, and so, I. I started to, I talked to some people and I asked some people, is this really controversial? I mean, what is controversial about this? And so some folks um, looked at the resolution and the documents and they, they said, you know, the only thing that looked unusual or atypical is the way the resolution was written. I mean, seriously, the name of the offering council member is the first line in the resolution, and that is unusual. And some people might have thought that to be grandstanding, but I wanna tell you that I, uh, I was here in 2016 when council member Fox uh, put forward the first resolution, though at the time it was about religious difference, but I spoke on behalf of council member Fox's resolution at that time. And so I want you to know, if there's any question, and I know that because I am well aware of the fact that Council Member Fox and I are both allies for the, GL, the LGBT community, and I know that she is well aware that this pride flag is the least that we can be doing for our community that our high schools desperately need student resource centers to support the LGBTQ community. And I look forward to Council Member Fox leading that charge and working with the high schools. And I look forward to Council Member Fox also helping us establish a human rights commission, very similar to the one that we have in Hunting that they have in Huntington Beach. So please please vote for this resolution so that we can move forward 
and show that Irvine not only will appear to be inclusive, but that we will also act upon the need for inclusion for all of our students, all of our residents, all of our community members. Thank you. Thank you for staying within your three minutes. Uh, Jacob Ribikoff, uh, and then followed by, uh, let's see, um, Jetta, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, uh, good evening, uh, Council Members Khan, Kuo, Carol, Fox, and Mayor Shea. Um, uh, I'm a graduate of Los Toronjos, um, Meadow Park, South Lake, Woodbridge, Irvine Valley College, and UC Irvine, and I'm a Oh, sorry. And I'm uh, currently a proud, and thanks to uh, a lot of uh, LGBT teachers, especially at Woodbridge and Southlake, um, I, I, I got a good job, and I got, uh, I'm now on the uh, board of uh, Homeowners Association at Orange Tree uh, Condominiums, and I own a condo at uh, Orange Blossom. Um, I can't think of anything, I can't think of an America without the contributions of uh, LGBT uh, people like Cole Porter, uh, Copeland, um, I, or the, uh, the very strong lesbians in the uh, U.S. Women's World Cup who had won 13 to 0 just today. Um, and, well, oh yeah, and we should honor the memory of Blaise Bernstein. Um, I'm an ally. Uh, I think we should uh, hoist the flag this month. And, uh, you know, it's the most Irvine thing. It's inclusive, it's economical, and it's a aesthetic. So that's uh, pretty much it. Thank you for your comments. Okay, <laughs> Judah Gamboya, followed by Suzanne Forrest. <clears throat> Good evening, Mayor Shea and council members. So my name is Yuta Gamboa. I live in the Crest community in uh, Turtle Rock in Irvine, and uh, I'm the chair of the Democrats of Greater Irvine. However, I don't speak here in my capacity as a chair, but as a private citizen of Irvine. I've lived here over 35 years and have raised my five children in this beautiful city, and one of my sons happens to be gay. Obviously, I care deeply about our city and about my family. My question to you, why wouldn't we fly the pride flag? What does pride actually mean? Pride is the positive stance against discrimination and violence toward LGBTQ people to promote their self-affirmation, dignity, equality rights, increase their visibility as a social group, build community, and celebrate sexual diversity. Pride, as opposed to shame and social stigma, is the predominant outlook that bolsters most LGBTQ rights movements throughout the world. I'm sure that Irvine wants to express its support of pride through hoisting the flag. What Irvine also could do is, and now I'll plug some seeds for future budget discussions, help fund a school district level LGBTQ liaison for Irvine School District who will direct matters related to safety and well being of affected students. As we have heard, there are issues. Establish an LGBTQ citywide task force to provide services to community members who, face, who have faced discrimination, to provide resources to city organizations, nonprofits, private companies who are seeking to create a more welcoming atmosphere for their constituents, to provide oversight to ensure the needs of extra vulnerable LGBTQ residents, the elderly, undocumented people, homeless residents are being met. Address health disparities within the LGBTQ community. Tobacco and drug use is more prevalent as a, pre as a response to negative experiences. And as we heard, suicide is unfortunately much more common too. These realities could be better addressed 
by the city as well. Therefore, flying the pride flag is a first step for Irvine to show more support for the LGBTQ community. Join many cities in the US and the world thank you very much and show your, your support. Okay, and thank show you. your support. Okay, great, thank, thank you. you. Good job. Okay, so, um, uh, Flores. Followed by uh, Michaela uh, Mant Mantera. Hi, welcome. Good evening, Mayor Shea and city council members. My name is Suzanne Flores. I live at 179 Lockford in Irvine. And I've lived in Irvine for uh, a little over a year now, and I am the mother of a gay adult son. I found Irvine to be a very welcoming city um, for all people. I've seen people and families from all cultures and walks of life in Irvine, including those from the LGBT community. Um, they've experienced the best life has to offer in Irvine. As I look back over the years growing up in California, I realize how far the LGBT community has come in gaining acceptance. <clears throat> so much so that the pride flag flies proudly over many buildings in California. My personal feeling is if you want to fly a flag to validate your personal struggle or victory, then by all means fly it. However, it may not be appropriate to fly it in all places, public places, such as City Hall, where the city must represent all citizens equally. The position of City Hall should not be to represent or favor one group over another, regardless of the struggles they've faced. I am opposed to flying the pride flag in the name of inclusion because it would inadvertently create an exclusion. Because not every group is going to be allowed to fly their flag at City Hall. As the mother of a gay son, I'm very conscious of my actions when it comes to issues related to the LGBTQ community, as I would never want to do anything that would appear hateful towards my son or disrespectful to his personal struggles. I had a wonderful conversation with my son about this and about my position, and he wholeheartedly agreed with me. As a gay man, he said all he wants is to be accepted and treated as a regular human being. He doesn't want special treatment for being gay. He strongly feels that City Hall is not an appropriate place for the pride flag. While I believe many do not understand the significance of the pride flag for the LGBTQ community, in my experience, I've seen the majority of Irvine residents accept and embrace their LGBTQ brothers and sisters just as they do any other member of the community. Members of the gay community are there with us working, contributing to our economy, making us smile, and moving mountains every day with us. They are us. A flag does not make or break a person's existence as a valued member of the community. What is truly important is that we stop creating silos in our community that divide us, and rather strive to come together as one people under one flag, indivisible. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comments. And Michaela Vantaner, Vantaner, I think. Welcome, and then William uh, Gayek, you're next. Hello. Uh, thank you, Mayor Shea, Mayor Pro Tem Cole, council members, staff, residents, and guests for the opportunity to speak briefly today. My name is Michaela Gonzalez Montana, and I'm a resident of Irvine. I'm here to express my support for the display of the pride flag at City Hall. In my opinion, it's a small way Irvine can make a big statement in support of our queer and trans residents, visitors, and their families. Doing so is an important part of signaling to everyone in and passing through Irvine that we strive to be a city where LGBTQIA++++ people are recognized, celebrated, and safe. It also sends the equally important message that hate and tolerance have no place in our city. I'd like to thank, or sorry, in closing, uh, I'd like to thank Mayor and Council for the opportunity to speak and to Council Member Fox for agendizing this item. And I'd also like to express my thanks to my fellow uh, speakers and residents for taking the time to speak up and in support of this initiative. It really makes the city feel like home. Thank you very much for your comments. <laughs> William, you're next, followed by uh, John Park 
and then James Stower, Stover, I'm sorry, Stover. Good evening, Mayor, Mayor um, Pro Tempore, and Council Members. My name is William Gayek. Uh, I am gay. I am a longtime Irvine resident and a graduate student at UC Irvine. I would like to voice my support for item 6.3 and ask that you support it too. Adoption of this resolution will help to lend visibility to a traditionally underrepresented and marginalized community. It will support a welcoming and accepting atmosphere for those that are out and for those who cannot come out at present due to fear of retaliation and discrimination. It acknowledges the civil, social, and legal progress to date made by the LGBT community and the many areas that remain to be improved upon. It shows that you value the contributions and the lives of the LGBT people here in Irvine and it sends a message to folks that the city of Irvine will not tolerate hate in any way, shape, or form. Again, I ask for your support in adopting item 6.3, and I thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you very much for your comments. Mayor, council members, good to see you again. Um, you know, I wasn't going to speak today because, of course, I have nothing prepared. So I figured I would just tell you a quick story. I grew up, actually, um, in a very small town in Virginia in the uh, 80s and 90s. So I tell you that story because I'm no stranger to discrimination. In fact, at the age of nine, I was walking home from school one day got chased down by a bunch of high school kids yelling everything racial possibly aimed at an Asian kid. They beat me so badly that day that I ended up with two black eyes. They took my backpack, my shoes, hid behind a bush for hours, came home very late at night, and I told my parents I got into a fight because I just didn't want to talk about it. So discrimination is a horrible thing. But I stand here in opposition of this resolution. And the reason being is I didn't need a flag to fix what happened to me. A flag wasn't going to fix what those kids, those misguided kids did to me that day. So when I look at a flagpole now, I look at the one flag that makes me feel included. And ladies and gentlemen, that's old glory. That's the, that's the only flag I need to feel included. I'm not anti-gay. I'm not homophobic. In fact, very far from it. In fact, I think everybody should be able to love anyone, marry anyone. I joke that you should have all the trials and tribulations of marriage, including fighting. And I stand here because my city feels, makes me feel included. And how it makes me feel included is to remain neutral. Not to bend at the knee at special interests. This one or any other special interest to come in the future if we adopt this resolution. Let's keep the flagpole, the American flag, the California flag, and of course our POW MIA flag. That's all we need to make us feel included. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Uh, Jane, hi, welcome. Nice to see you. Thank you, you too. Thanks so much. Good evening, honorable mayor and council members. My name is Jane Stover, and I am speaking in favor of displaying the pride flag here in Irvine at our city hall. My husband, Dave Min, and I both live and work here in the city of, of Irvine, and we do our most important work here of raising our three young children who are currently in preschool and elementary school. I am a professor at UC Irvine's Law School, where I direct our domestic violence clinic and teach family law and legal ethics. And I've spent my career doing anti-violence work and working for equality. Laws and government edicts that promote the dignity autonomy and humanity of everyone 
reduce violence in families and in communities and are so important for individuals' well-being. Whether we think about the Violence Against Women Act or the Supreme Court's 2015 marriage equality decision in Obergefell versus Hodges, determining that the Constitution guarantees each person the right to marry the person they love, these legal actions make our communities safer by proclaiming equality and acceptance. Conversely, when our leaders take actions or enact legislation or regulations that infringe on the rights of targeted individuals, Violence often increases, as we've seen, with increasing hate crimes, homophobia, and bigotry. Other speakers have spoken to our heartbreak as a community over Blaise Bernstein's murder last year. And we just saw in the news several days ago, two lesbians were brutally beaten on a bus in London. These are very real, very current issues. My family loves living here in Irvine. This is a special place. Other speakers have talked about it's world famous, it's truly world famous for its safety and diversity. And these values of safety and diversity are also what flying the rainbow flag during Pride Month are about. The flag tells our residents, you are welcome here, everyone is welcome. You are safe here, everyone is safe. This is a community that celebrates diversity, inclusion, and love. I teach my students that so much of family law is about how we care for each other in the world and how our laws and policies encourage or discourage this care. And I ask our city council to think about how, our Irvine, how Irvine communicates our care and our care for all. During the first hour of tonight's meeting, we heard many announcements about important events in our community. And one event coming up in our community that our family's excited about, always participates in, is the Pride Parade. And we were talking this past weekend, and my daughter asked, why is Pride Month a month? Why isn't, the whole, is, why isn't it the whole year? Great question. She's graduating kindergarten tomorrow. So we talked about the values that we practice and celebrate year-round, of course. And our kids, they grow up knowing love is love. We also talked about the history and significance of designating June as Pride Month and other significance in the struggles we continue. Thank you very much. Your time's up, but thank you thank for your you. comments. We appreciate it. And happy birthday. Oh, not birthday. Graduation. Felicity, um, uh, let me get my glasses on here. For, uh, Figueroa. 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 Sorry, I know who you are, but I just no, you know couldn't who I am. read this very well. We were on the library task force for five years together. I know, and, and what happened with that? Well, we can talk about that later. <laughs> yeah, that's later. Anyway, my time is running, so hello. Um, my name is Felicity Figueroa, as we've established. I've lived in Irvine for over 28 years. I attend an open and affirming church just down the block. My kids both went to Irvine Public Schools. In fact, my son was the vice president of the GSA, that's the Gay Straight Alliance, at Woodbridge High. And I'm uh, happy to say that next week at OC Pride, he'll be performing on the main stage. So I'm a very proud mama. I'm also the current, president, uh, the current chair of the Orange County Equality Coalition or OCEC. Our group came into existence after the passage of Prop 8, a divisive and ultimately uh, proven unconstitutional initiative that many of us fought vehemently against. Fortunately, times have changed since then. Today, our organization works to ensure that LGBTQ students, and in fact, all students, can count on a school atmosphere that is supportive and non-discriminatory. Last week, as uh, the chair of OCEC, I had the honor of accepting a proclamation in support of Pride Month from the Aliso Viejo City Council. It was a proud moment for me, another proud moment, for me, for our organization, and for the LGBTQ community. So of course, I'm in favor of the raising of the Pride flag over my city hall, for all the reasons that have already been mentioned by so many people here this evening. I must say, though, that I am disappointed with the process by which this resolution was brought forth. Usually a decision of this kind requires a lot of coalition building. It requires working together with local LGBTQ organizations and with community members. It typically necessitate, necessitates weeks of discussion to educate and inform those who may not understand the deep significance of the rainbow flag and the need to show support to this very vulnerable community. That way, we could have a unanimous vote in favor of raising this symbol of love and acceptance. 
I hope that in spite of the last minute nature of this resolution and in view of the many heartfelt comments you have all heard tonight, then this could still be the case. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Brian Fazio, followed by, uh, followed by Tammy Kim. Hi, Brian, how are you? Welcome. Okay. <laughs> and Tammy Kim, if you'll be in the wings, appreciate it. My name is Brian Fazio. I'm born and raised in Irvine, 115 Greenmore. I've been here, um, Springbrook, South Lake Middle School, Woodbridge High School. I graduated from Concordia, and then I proudly joined the US Navy. I'm here to speak in favor of the Rainbow Pride flag. I wanna thank the members of this council, Mayor, Mayor Fox. I proudly served in our US Armed Forces with many brave LGBT service members, some who gave the ultimate sacrifice for this country. One of the things that I really value about Irvine it is our commitment to our service members and our commitment to those who have served this country. I wanna remind this council with voting on this. We have 20,000 transgender service members that are serving this country. We have transgender service members that are in our Navy SEALs. We have transgender service members that are serving in our Army right now. We have transgender service members that are serving our country all over. I wanna thank everybody that has spoken here but I want this council to also remember. We have 30,000 plus LGBT service members that are serving in our armed forces right now. We have hundreds and thousands of LGBT service members that have served in this country. Some of them have made the ultimate sacrifice. Some of these LGBT, some of these LGBT service members are Gold Star families. So I want you to think when you are thinking about raising this rainbow flag. Old Glory, some of those LGBT service members died for this flag. Some of those LGBT service members died so that, so that we can be able to have this conversation here tonight. My brother, my younger brother saved my life. I got cancer while I was serving this country during the war on terror before my deployment to the Middle East. I used to not believe in gay marriage. However, my views have evolved with serving in our armed forces, serving with our LGBT service members and, serve, and seeing my younger brother and meeting many amazing LGBT people. I urge this city council to rectify its past like I have rectified my past on this issue. Please do the right thing and think of our veterans and think of our military service members and support this resolution. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Tammy Kim, welcome. Hi, I'm Tammy Kim, um, and I'm here today as a resident of Irvine for the past 14 years. So thank you, Mayor Shea, and for the council members, and thank you, uh, Councilwoman Fox, for putting this on the agenda. Um, I stand here before you today as an ally in support of human rights for all people. The LGBTQ community has issued has been historically marginalized and has faced great discrimination. And I'm here to urge the city to adopt the resolution displaying the pride flag. So to, to fly the flag is to provide a learning opportunity for those who come to City Hall. That's what I truly believe. And I also believe that it's an opportunity to stand in solidarity with our LGBTQ neighbors um, and to also stand against homo homophobia and intolerance. We have a wonderful city here, and we want to show our city as on the leading edge 
Um, and we wanna make sure that we don't discriminate against people and we people feel included uh, in our city. I also wanna point out that I support flying the pride flag as much the way we su uh, support POWs and uh, those missing in action when we have the flag displayed up on City Hall. So I do wanna point that out because people, th there have been comments um, about having no other flags except the United States flag. So um, thank you very much. And I hope Thank that you very much for your that. comments and thank you for sticking within your three minutes. Um, now I'm not gonna know if I'm gonna get this right. Iyad Afolaka. And please correct me, I apologize. <laughs> Good evening, uh, Madam Mayor and uh, Council Members. Uh, my name is Iyad Afalka. I'm the outgoing chair of the Arab American Caucus, California Democratic Party, but I'm not speaking in that capacity. I have been a resident of the city of Irvine for the past 11 years, and I have been an ally for the LGBTQI community uh, since the brutal murder of Matthew Shepard. So I stand before you today to urge you to do the right thing and fly the bright flag on the city of Irvine. Um, as a Muslim American and Arab American uh, community leader, I know how it feels to be alienated. I know how it feels to be voiceless. And when I moved to the city of Irvine, I moved to a city of tolerance that was leading the nation not lagging behind as we do right now. Um, just want to make sure that we don't speak too much about what God said so little, and we don't speak too little about what God said so much. God said so much about being nice to our neighbors. God said so much being kind to each other, be inclusive, and making sure that everybody feels safe as the reputation of our city. Uh, regardless of which God we pray to, regardless of which uh, mosque, synagogue, temple, church we go to, I want to remind you that the city of Irvine should be the city that leads the nation, not follow others and being discriminating and alienating a community contributing to the fabrics of this country. Uh, I find it very odd people are calling for a flying Macy's and Walmart and JCPenney and other corporations flags on our city hall, but they are not tabbing into flying flags that represent our diversity and sending the message loud and clear saying anti-Semitism is not welcome, Islamophobia is not welcome, homophobia is not welcome. Xenophobia is not welcome. We are the city of tolerance. We are the city of inclusion. And as the council dais starts showing kind of the faces of Irvine, it's time for us to fly the pride flag and show the nation that we are leading the trend. We are not following the trend. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your comments. Uh, we'll go now to Ben Chapman and then uh, Christian Shin, and that will be our final speaker. Good evening, Council. Uh, my name is Ben Chapman, and I've been a resident here Welcome. in Orange County for... Uh, about 13 years. Um, things like this are why I left the Democratic Party about 11 years ago. These issues are just meant to pivot and divide people, in my opinion. Stonewall riots took place on June 28, 1969, which ultimately led to the first Pride March taking place through Lower Manhattan, through Greenwich Village, passing the Stonewall National Monument as part of Christopher Street liberation. The first cases of what would later uh, become known as AIDS were reported in the United States in June of 1981. <clears throat> Harvey Milk was an American politician and the first openly gay elected official in history of California 
where he was elected to the San Francisco Board of Supervisors. So why do I bring all of this up? What does the pride flag mean? Does it mean tolerance, diversity, acceptance, pride? As a gay conservative myself, I can tell you right now, I've been discriminated much more by the LGBT community than anyone in the Republican Party. And there are many people like me. There are gay conservatives, younger, older, millennials like myself, veterans, different backgrounds, different nationalities. I'm Hispanic. And one person in particular was just at Pride Parade, uh, the Pride Parade in West Hollywood this weekend. His name is Mario Estrada. Saturday, June 8th, and I quote, I literally got out of my car on sunset near the Roxy to walk down and meet my friends at Starbucks on Santa Monica Boulevard, fed my meter, walked 20 steps, and someone honked and shouted F you at me and my husband, who we were wearing mega hats at, and with our pride colors. While waiting for friends to record their interviews, I decided to inquire uh, at the booth nearby and realized it was for AIDS and HIV awareness. I took it as an opportune time to tell them about wonderful things this administration, the Trump administration, has done for the community and for AIDS. They told me I was lying. I defended my argument, and they told me to please sign and leave. Soon after finishing with this information, we were told that we needed to move away from the booth as quickly as possible. Later, there was also a young lady who was waiting in line for a drink who stumbled over herself to scream F you as well. Is this tolerance? Is this acceptance? I, like, I, 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 I know we all like to pride ourselves and think that the LGBT community is all fun and fancy and free, but it's not. So if you vote against raising the flag, or against raising the flag, you are not a bigot, you are not homophobic, and you're doing what the pride flag is meant to do, show pride. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much, your time's up. Thank you. And one more speaker, you wanna come forward? Christian Chin. Welcome. Hello. Thank you, Mayor Shea and members of the City Council. My name is Christian Shin, and I'm going to be a senior at Northwood High School next year. I'm here as an ally for the LGBT community and my fellow LGBT students. At first, I thought it was very silly that we would even be having this conversation right now. Why wouldn't we be flying the LGBT flag? But there's very clearly opposition towards this movement. I understand that some people would like to equate the raising of the pride flag to the raising of the Confederate flag, or that some people think that raising the pride flag may put off some members of the Irvine community. This is obviously quite silly. Perhaps some of these people feel that the raising of the pride flag and maybe even members of the LGBT community itself are as reprehensible as the ideas put up by the Confederate flag and those that followed that ideology. Or perhaps some of these people feel put off by the members of the LGBT community as they claim maybe other people might. We must fly the LGBT flag to show these members of the community that they're not welcome and that their homophobia and bigotry should not be allowed in Irvine. The raising of the pride flag for this month would show our support for our fellow LGBT neighbors. Instead of staying neutral and accepting the status quo of the rising amount of hate crimes and bigotry towards the LGBT community, we must fight or we must stand in solidarity with our fellow Irvine LGBTQ, LGBTQ members. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comments. Okay, with that, I will turn this back over to Council Member Fox if you'd like to share a few thoughts or uh, move forward with, what, with your proposal. Thank you, yes, I appreciate very much the community coming out. It's very interesting that we talked about additional education. I know I've asked uh, other members of the council if they wanted education on this. They said absolutely not, they know where they stand, so. Um, you never asked me about that. I thought I talked to you outside my office, Mayor Shea, but I mean, if you, I, was I would down the invite. Hall and you and I didn't talk at all about that. Mm. Just go ahead. That's not actually accurate. So. Ready? May I continue? 
Yes, we have the floor. B. I'm not ready to put this off. I'm not ready to consult any experts because the time is up on this. Too many people have been hurt. There are too many people in our schools who feel unwelcome, who feel that they are not supportive. There are major mental health issues in the shame that have been brought down on particularly our young people. We need to stand together today and join with the LGBTQ plus community and say love conquers all and that is what we support here as a community. And we've heard some very moving testimony today and I'm so grateful for everyone who came out to talk about their personal experiences. And I think it's interesting that you are indeed seeing the community of Irvine at work. And so at this time I will make a motion that we fly the pride flag and adopt the policies that were put together uh, in the motion on 6.3 so that we have the authority to do so. And I wanted to see if there was a second. Could you, would you mind reading your two resolutions? I think that's important because so people are clear that you have two different resolutions. Right? Yes, well, first of all, I will clarify why we did it this way. Our current flag protocol deals with the city, uh, the city of Irvine flag protocol of rules and regulations as set forth by U.S. Code. References for flag protocol questions shall be cited as the U.S. Code Title IV chapter. City clerk's office shall be the office that directs city flags to be flown at half staff. Civic center flags are defined as follows. One, Piazza, U.S. flag and California state flag shall be flown on the permanent lighted flagpoles in addition a POW MIA flag shall be permanently flown from a fixed standard on the wall adjacent to the piazza entry to Civic Center. Oh, if I could just interrupt real quickly, I'm sorry. I meant for you to read your two proposed yes. resolutions, not just the city. It, you can do that, but I thought you might want to read because you, you were going to make well, a motion. Well, the questions are why we're bringing an ordinance, um, a change to the flag policy. Oh, okay, that's fine. I, would, I just didn't know if you understood what I said. I just thought it'd be good for people to hear your, your resolutions that you've written and that are before us. I'm happy to do that, okay. but the question I thought was why. So I'm happy to, I'll dispense with the reading of the current ordinance and just posit that it was my understanding that based on our current policy, we needed to adopt an additional or uh, an amended policy that allowed for the flying of the pride flag. So I will read my memo. Okay, thank you. Okay. Please place the following proposed resolutions on the City Council on the agenda for the June 11th, 2019 City Meeting. One, a resolution of the City Council of the City of Irvine, California, establishing a policy for the display of flags at City Hall. This resolution establishes a policy for the display of commemorative flags at City Hall. Historically, the City of Irvine has displayed flags in conformance with federal and state statutes which outline standards for the display of the flag of the United States the California state flag and the city of Irvine flag. The proposed policy establishes the order of the display and includes the requirement that when a commemorative flag is added, it will be displayed in a position of honor following the aforementioned flags unless otherwise directed by the city council and to the extent such protocol does not conflict with federal or state law. The city's flagpoles are not intended to serve as a forum for free expression by the public Rather, the city's flagpoles are to be used exclusively by the city, where the city council may display a commemorative flag as a form of government expression. The city will not display a commemorative flag based on a request from a third party, nor will the city use its flagpoles to sponsor the expression of a third party. The government speech doctrine, defined by the United States Supreme Court, establishes that a government organization, such as the city of Irvine, may advance as its own expression without requiring viewpoint neutrality when the government itself is the speaker. So long as its expression does not show religious preference or encourage a certain vote in an election. Therefore, the city could, by adoption of a resolution, display a commemorative flag as a form of government ex expression, so long as the commemorative flag does not show religious preference or encourage a certain vote in an election. Consequently, if the city council adopts a resolution to display a commemorative flag, the display of the commemorative flag would be an exercise of government expression where the city is the speaker. Two, resolution of the city council of the city of Irvine, California, authorizing the annual display of the pride flag at city hall 
to commemorate Harvey Milk Day and Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, and Transgender Pride Month. According to the Library of Congress, Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, and Transgender Pride Month, LGBT Pride Month, is currently celebrated each year in the month of June to honor the 1969 Stonewall Riots in Manhattan. The Stonewall Riots were a tipping point for the gay liberation movement in the United States. In the United States, the last Sunday in June was initially celebrated as Gay Pride Day, but the actual day was flexible. In major cities across the nation, the day soon grew to encompass a month-long series of events. Today, celebrations include pride parades, picnics, parties, workshops, symposia and concerts, and LGBT Pride Month events attract millions of participants around the world. Memorials are held during this month for those members of the community who have been lost to hate crimes or HIV and AIDS. The purpose of the commemorative month is to recognize the impact that lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender individuals have had on history locally, nationally, and internationally. LGBT History Month is also celebrated with annual month-long observances of lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender history, along with the history of the gay rights and related civil rights movements. National Coming Out Day, October 11th, as well as the first March on Washington in 1979, are commemorated in the LGBT community during LGBT History Month. Fiscal impact, there is no fiscal impact. Do you want the resolution as well? Well, all I ask you to do is to read your, the resolution. You have two, right? That's all I ask you if you do that. Okay. But it's fine. The history is fine. But I just ask if you could just read your two resolutions. Resolution number you one. To vote on. A resolution of the City Council of the City of Irvine, California, establishing a policy for the display of flags at City Hall. The City Council of the City of Irvine hereby resolves as follows. Section one. The City Council of the City of Irvine hereby finds, determines, and declares that the city's flagpoles are not intended to serve as a forum for free expression by the public, but rather for the display of federal, state, and city flags and any commemorative flags as may be authorized by resolution of the City Council as an expression of the city's official sentiments. Section 2. The City Council of the City of Irvine hereby adopts the following policy for the display of flags at City Hall. Policy. Purpose. This policy provides the procedural guidance for the display of flags at City Hall. Procedures. Flags shall be displayed in conformance with federal and state statutes, including Title IV, Chapter 1 of the United States Code and Sections 430 through 439 of the California Government Code. Standards. A. Commemorative flags. 1. Commemorative flags may be displayed only as authorized by resolutions of the City Council and as an expression of the City's official sentiments. Two, commemorative flags shall be displayed for a period of time that is reasonable or customary for the subject that is to be commemorated, but no longer than 45 continuous days. Three, commemorative flags shall be displayed at City Hall exclusively. Four, the city will not display a commemorative flag based on a request from a third party, nor will the city use its flagpoles to sponsor the expression of a third party. B, display of flags. Shall be, flags shall be displayed as follows. The United States flag shall be displayed in the first position of honor. The California flag shall be placed in the second position of honor. The city of Irvine flag, if displayed, shall be placed in the third position of honor. Commemorative flags shall be displayed in positions of honor following the aforementioned flags unless otherwise directed by the city council and to the extent such protocol does not conflict with federal or state law. And then the adopted line. Second resolution. Resolution of the city council of the city of Irvine, California authorizing the annual display of the pride flag at city hall to commemorate Harvey Milk Day and lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender month. Whereas Councilmember Melissa Fox requests that an item be placed on the June 11, 2019 Council agenda to consider adopting a resolution authorizing the annual display of the pride flag at, El, uh, at City Hall to commemorate Harvey Milk Day and Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, and Transgender LGBT Pride Month. And whereas LGBT Pride Month is currently celebrated each year in the month of June to honor the 1969 Stonewall Riots in Manhattan. The Stonewall Riots were a tipping point for the gay liberation movement in the United States. 
Memorials are held during this month for those members of the community who have been lost to hate crimes or HIV AIDS. The purpose of the commemorative month is to recognize the impact that lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender individuals have had on history locally, nationally, and internationally. Now, therefore, the City, of Counts, the city Council of the City of Irvine hereby resolves as follows. The pride flag shall be displayed at City Hall annually from May 22nd to June 30th as adopted by the Irvine City Council on June 11th, 2019. Okay, so that is your motion. Okay. So moved. There's a motion. Is there a second? I second. Okay, there's a motion and a second, and now we can discuss the item before us. Uh, any comments uh, that you'd like to share? I'm just, I gotta make sure the back of my home yeah, panel, I'm yeah. sorry, I should be. Okay, uh, <coughs> Council Member Carroll. Thank you, thank you, uh, Mayor Shea. Uh, and first I would just like to say thank you for everyone that came out tonight to speak on all sides of this issue. Uh, it was a very respectful um, dialogue. I really appreciated all the public comments personally that everyone gave. Um, some of them were very moving. Uh, many of them were actually very, very moving. Uh, and Mayor Shea, uh, with your indulgence and with that of my fellow council members, I'd like to read a statement. Sure, go right ahead. Irvine does not need a spectacle of divisiveness. Local government has tremendous responsibilities. We make decisions that directly affect the daily lives of our residents. Public safety, parks, traffic, and land use are just some of the many important concerns for which we have primary constitutional responsibility. As elected city of Irvine officials, the residents have entrusted us with ensuring that Irvine is the best place to live, work, and raise a family. And as board members of the Great Park, we also have an additional responsibility to create and maintain a truly great park for generations to come. These substantial responsibilities and historic opportunities are more than enough to keep our city council and our city staff fully engaged and absorbed in the business of the people who elected us to work together to guide this beautiful and dynamic city. We should not chase after issues and concerns and controversies that are well outside our important but constitutionally limited areas of responsibility. We should especially avoid doing so regarding issues, concerns, and controversies that not, are, not only are outside our constitutional sphere, but are also highly divisive. As city leaders, we should not be inciting unnecessary and corrosive divisions in our community. For these reasons, I strongly oppose placing a discussion of this matter before the Irvine City Council. The issue may be resolved in other tribunals and in other forums, but not in our city council chambers. There's no good reason for the city of Irvine to become involved. There's absolutely nothing that Irvine can add to either side of this debate. We know that in each of the cities of Orange County where this issue has been placed on the city council agenda, a spectacle of divisiveness has followed. In city after city that has placed a discussion of this measure on the council's agenda, resident speakers have been far outnumbered by outsiders and reasonable voices have been out, uh, out drowned, uh, drowned out by extremists. What these spectacles have produced is not positive policy that can bring a city together, but theatrical politics of division that could only drive all of us apart. We are proud of saying that Irvine is not only among the most diverse cities in the nation, but is only also the most fully integrated. There are no ethnic, linguistic, religious, or cultural enclaves in Irvine. Every neighborhood in Irvine reflects Irvine's harmon harmonious ethnic, linguistic, religious, and cultural diversity. What is foreign to Irvine is this spectacle of divisiveness that this unnecessary agenda item will produce. I have been proud to work with my colleagues on the Irvine City Council, I will insert for a very short time in brackets, to accomplish many good things for this wonderful city. While we have had disagreements, these disagreements have not been partisan and they haven't been ideological. We have been remarkably free from the partisan rancor that has all, all too overtaken our national politics, much to the disgust of most of the American people. And despite our political differences, I have never doubted that each of my colleagues has been motivated solely by the concern for what this council should be doing within its constitutional power to do for the residents of this city. 
I must conclude otherwise that placing this unnecessary and extremely divisive issue is well outside our jurisdiction and constitutional authority of the city council agenda. Madam Mayor, the words of the statement that I just read, and please don't applaud. Madam Mayor, the words of the statement I just read are not my words. No, they're not my words. I thought long and hard about what to say on this item when I received it. And I realized that the best words to use were not my own. They were the words that I just read, and they are not mine. Madam Mayor, these words are verbatim, the very words of my council member, to my left, Melissa Fox, the proponent of this motion before us tonight. Council member Fox published these words on September 25, 2018. And to be honest, she made the case tonight better than I ever could, so I used it. These words were about a previous divisive matter that had nothing to do with me and I wasn't on this city council. I submit these very same words as my statement and my opinion here tonight. I adopt them as my own. I filled out an application to be appointed to this city council and I'm honored and blessed to have received the votes of four members of this council to be appointed. And I called Melissa Fox a friend, even though she wasn't able to get there and she erroneously voted and took it back, but I'll, she had the idea right in some sense. I would say that in that application, there was a question that said, what happens when you come to an issue that maybe is uh, you know, something that is, is a challenging issue and, and splits people apart and is divisive? And my answer was something to the effect of this. One of my favorite books, and I have an original framed copy of his Profiles of Courage. It was written by then Senator John F. Kennedy in, I think, 1953. And it was about senators that he profiled in the United States Senate that took extremely, extremely difficult uh, decisions and, ma and made certain stances for themselves that pretty much cost, them so that cost themselves their, their political future. And my answer was, you know, I would kind of think about Profiles of Courage and I would think about what was best for everyone, not one group, but for everyone, keeping in mind that I'm a fiduciary for about 277,000 people, some of which are in this in the room, but many, vastly many more are not in this room tonight. And what I would like to do is to offer Madam Mayor a substitute motion that balances the request of Council Member Fox against her own yardstick. The yardstick as follows, quote, let's avoid spectacles that have produced not positive policy that could bring a city together, but instead the theatrical politics of division that can only drive us apart. So I would propose that we try another way. And when I do this, I think of my friends of varying orientation, and I think of my family members of varying orientation, and I think of Irvine community members of varying orientation, and I think of a guy named Mike Smithers who lost, lost his life to cancer two weeks ago, who was the owner and director of a school called the Goddard School, which is sort of like a Montessori school in Ladera Ranch where my daughters attended, and leaves behind his husband and two children in Laguna Beach where he lived. And I'm thinking about the 277,000 men, women, children, and families that are going about their lives at this very moment at about 9.50, you know, whatever it is, 9.54 p.m. I'm thinking of them too, sorry, 9.58. 8.54. 8 8.58, it feels like 9.58, council member. When we're talking about flags, and I'd ask for your indulgence as I you know, listen to, to everyone here, we're talking about distinguishing flags of allegiance versus commemorative flags of heritage and symbolism. The United States flag is a flag of allegiance. We pledge allegiance, most of us, I assume all of us, stood here tonight, put our hand over our heart, and, and made a pledge of uh, allegiance to that banner. The second banner is the banner of the state of California. And some of us, I, all five of us up here actually raised our right hand or, yeah, right hand, and, and also uh, pledged our allegiance to the constitution of that state that is emblematic of that banner. And we gave our allegiance to it. And the city of Irvine, everyone that lives here has allegiance to that flag because we've consented to be governed by the charter and the ordinances of this city. Those are flags of allegiance. Since 1998, the prisoner of war Michigan action flag has been flown right at our piazza. That flag honors the following. 78,751 prisoners of war MIAs of World War II, 8,177 POW MIAs of the Korean War, and 2,123 POW MIAs of the Vietnam War, as well as recent POW MIAs. That represents our nation's allegiance and commitment to recovering prisoners and missing in action men and women who fought under that banner of the United States of America, that inclusive banner that represents all of us. 
Another way to say this is that these flags are governmental versus flags that represent important issues are non-governmental in nature. These flags symbolize the government that we as citizens have agreed to be governed by, essentially be ruled by. And with commemorative heritage flags, we have competing flags they'd have to judge, and there are all manner of flags. There is a pride flag, as mentioned tonight, there's a transgender flag, there's a flag of the United States Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, there's a 75th anniversary of D-Day flag, the Red Cross flag, there's an Air and Go Block flag, there's an American Ecology flag, and I can go on and on. Now there is a fix that balances the wish to highlight non-governmental commemorative flags that symbolize heritage against the display governmentally of allegiance governmental flags. We have to look no further than the Congress of the United States of America. And that Congress is controlled, the upper house, the Senate, by one political party, and that lower house is controlled by the, the other political party. Here's how they do it, and frankly, I think they do it quite well. There's no pride of authorship, and I'm just borrowing the idea. The offices of the members of Congress accommodate three flags. One space goes to the American flag, and one space goes to the member's state flag, or territory or District of Columbia. And the third slot is used for a personal selection of a council member. The flags are arranged so they follow all the laws of the display of the American flag. Now, most senators and representatives display only the flags of the United States in their home state, although many do include the flags of the branch of the military in which they serve, such as the Marines or the Army. However, some members, and the numbers are increasing, display other flags. For example, Congressman Alan Lowenthal from this state of California regularly flies the pride flag. He's been flying it since 2013. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, Senator Bernie Sanders, and Congress member Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez have recently displayed a pink, blue, and white flag, which represents the transgender community. We actually, I know I did, received a few emails from residents uh, supporting that flag tonight in our council mailbox. Congress member Sam Farr of California flies the flag of the Peace Corps as his third flag where his was a public service career brand in 1964, and he occasionally flies the United Nations flag. And it is my understanding that our member of Congress, Katie Porter, flies the United States flag, the state of California flag, and the University of California Irvine flag. And I think that's really cool, just like the other commemorative flags, because she's a professor, at UC, a law professor at UCI. She flies into the third position, and she lives up there in University Hills. So, Rather than creating some kind of litmus test to brand someone up here as intolerant, which none of us up here are, and rather than play some game of gotcha politics, I hereby make a substantive resolution to recognize the importance of the allegiance flags by, at the same time, recognizing commemorative flags. And Madam Mayor, with your permission, I will read the substitute motion. No, please go right ahead. A resolution of the City Council of the City of Irvine, California, establishing a policy for the display of flags at City Hall the City Council of the City of Irvine hereby resolves as follows. Section one, the City of Council of Irvine, of the City of Irvine, excuse me, hereby, and I, I apologize, Council Member. I, I do, I do, I apologize, everyone. Yeah, sorry. And everyone up here on the desk, please read along. I have, I, have enough to, I have enough to go down to Jeff and, and okay, the City you. Manager. I apologize. And I'll just begin with section one. The City Council of the City of Irvine hereby finds, determines, and declares that the city flagpoles are not intended to serve as a form for free expression by the public, but rather solely for the display of, one, the flag of the United States of America, two, the flag of the state of California, three, the flag of the city of Irvine, and four, the POW MIA flag. Section two, the City Council of the City of Irvine hereby finds, determines, and declares that the United Congress of the United States of America permits each of its members to display three flags of a member's choosing, with one space for the flag of the United States of America, one space for the member state or district or territory flag, and one space for a commemorative flag at the personal selection of the member. Section three, the city council of the city of Irvine hereby adopts the following policy for the display of flags at city hall. Policy, purpose. This policy provides the procedural guidance for the display of flags on city platforms, including flagpoles at the city of Irvine Civic Center, as well as the display of flags in the mayor's office and council members' offices. City flagpole procedures. Flags will be displayed on city flagpoles, including flagpoles at the City of Irvine Civic Center in full conformance with existing city policy and procedure entitled Flag po Protocol as set forth on Schedule 1 attached here too. That's the current policy that we have up here. Uh, which in all instances shall confirm with federal and state statutes, including Title IV, Chapter 1 of the United States Code and Sections 430 through 49, 439 of the California Government Code. Turning the page. Commemorative flag procedures. 
the mayor and each council member shall be permitted to display up to three flags in the mayor's office or the council member's office as applicable, which may consist of three of the following flags. One, the flag of the United States of America. Two, the flag of the state of California. And three, the flag of the city of Irvine. Or four, a commemorative flag at the personal selection of the council member. Two, only one commemorative flag may be displayed at a time. Number three, commemorative flags shall be displayed for a period of time that is reasonable or customary for the subject that is to be commemorated, but in no longer than 45 days. This is a residual from council member Fox's motion. Number four, the city, the mayor, and the council members shall not display a commemorative flag based on the request from a third party, nor shall the city, the mayor, or the council members use flag poles or offices to sponsor the expression of the third party. And schedule one is the existing city council policy procedure for the flying of the United States flag, state flag, POW flag, et cetera, et cetera, and the days in which we fly this flag and when we fly the for the public's you know, benefit, when we fly the large flag outside the, uh, uh, whatever that's called, the glass area. <laughs> so I, I, I hereby move that motion. Uh, okay, there's you. a motion on the floor. Is there a second? M Madam Mayor, I'm, discussion? I'd like to, well, let me second it for purposes of a discussion and then through the chair if I could have two questions um, yes. of, of the proponent. We're, we're still doing requests to speak, right? No, the, no. Uh, you're just calling on people. At, oh, as I'm you sorry. Speak. Well, you've spoken several times now, so now we're going from him okay, down well, here. Well, just asking okay. clarification. Sorry. Okay, sure, I'll get back to you as soon as we, okay, that's fine. I just want to go down yeah, so everybody has a chance. Now, you will speak. Okay, so bullet point number three, um, and perhaps this is a question, I don't know if this is a question that ought to be directed to Councilmember Carroll or Councilmember Fox, but this notion that something shouldn't be displayed, uh, some that a flag would not be displayed for longer than 45 continuous days. Um, suppose I wanted to display yeah. the UC Irvine flag. I mean, I, I, it's not like the holiday flags on your front yard where my neighbor puts a Thanksgiving turkey up at things. I mean, there's yeah. there's not a, so can I, I just. I, I, I can answer that, Council Member okay. Um I actually would only say that my intent was to, remo again, remove divisiveness and rancor and get to a point at which people can display commemorative flags. And so therefore, I took this, I lifted this off okay. apparently our Parks Commissioner's resolution that she drafted that, uh, our chairman of our Parks Commission who drafted it and our council member who introduced it. So I don't even, I have no idea. And I am okay. fully open to flying a commemorative flag as long as the council member or mayor wishes to do so. I just was trying to retain as much as I could. Right. Okay, and then the second is, I guess, I guess, also a question to Councilmember Fox. I, I'm not understanding this request from a third party. Right. So if the American Red Cross comes to me and says, "It's American Red Cross Month, will you display the flag?" Is that not a third party? Councilmember, when I just because it's my substitute motion, can I just sure. answer that first? I just want to point out for, for the for the chair's benefit and for the public that that's the same. Re I was just trying right. to retain. I, right. Just want to make sure you know. Yeah. Right, so I think it is a good question to ask Councilmember Fox, because I don't understand that either. I'm assuming that some folks have reached out to you to fly this flag. That was a third, that would, to me, be considered a third party. So I don't, I don't understand what that means. I'm very happy to explain. So there's been a Supreme Court case which says that cities are entitled to freedom of expression and speech. So rather than at the behest or request of the public, there must be an action of the city council, and that's what this provides, that there's an action authorizing the flying of a commemorative flag. So we're fitting within the Supreme Court case. So rather than um, a party taking it upon themselves or directing without the direction of the city council to fly a flag, a third party is not entitled to do so. So I, I also want to thank uh, Council Member Carroll for repeating my remarks as to the California Values Act and taking a position against the California Values Act and discrimination against immigrants. Uh, and I also wanted to clarify, so the request, so the substitute motion would be, so rather than having a public display of a commemorative flag to support Pride Month, Council members would then have the option within their own private offices on the third floor to which the public does not have access 
to fly a flag on our wall in the corner or outside in the hallway in the private corridor? Is that what's being proposed? Uh, Council Member Fox, what is being proposed is what I moved as a motion. Any council member can host any number and anyone they want in their offices, as everyone up here knows. And any council member can post all manner of pictures on their social media and otherwise with their commemorative flags, their United States flags, their California flags, and their city of Irvine flags. So my response to you is, the, is, the, is to best we can here at City Hall mimic and try to come to a values-based compromise that reflects as far as it can, and this comes pretty darn close, to what the United States Congress does for its members of the House of Representatives and the Senate. Okay, thank you. So, Council Member Fox, you had any other, other comments? I did, thank you. Um, I, so I think, yes, what we're saying is so that the display, which I don't think we need a motion to authorize what we've put up on our walls in the office or outside um, in the corridor. Uh, I think I didn't have to ask to put up my son's picture or the map of the OCFA divisions or things that are in my office. And while, yes, I do invite people into my office, since there's only two chairs, I don't think it would make the impact that we're going for here by flying the pride flag. So, but that is, I did want to clarify that we're talking about the area behind the reception desk, behind the glass doors, on the third floor, up the elevator, down the hallway, in past the clerk's office, and back in the corner to which we can set meetings, but not for the public on City Hall property exterior to the building. So I think I understand very well then what you're proposing. Just wanted to make clear. And if you wanted to know about the 45 days, the issue was that there wouldn't be something that would be of permanence. It would be a commemorative issue. But I'm happy to waive the 45-day requirement on the original motion if you're uh, interested. But then I do have on, on the substitute motion, I have a question to our council. Is there, Jeff, yeah. <laughs> Is there any need to have some kind of formal resolution to fly a, a pride flag in our separate offices? Or any other commemorative flag? No, you do not need a motion to place a flag in your office. However, this motion. Let's, however, let, let's please let him speak, thank you. However, this motion at a minimum, facilitates the placement of a United States flag and a California flag in your office, which again, you don't need permission to do, but this would make it a matter of city policy and get staff support for facilitating those types of things. And then so as to the ceremonial flags, let's say outside the mayor's office, so the mayor would be able to choose what uh, commemorative flag she wishes to support outside her own ceremonial office, but that would not be subject to review or approval by any other council member under this substitute motion? Well, if I can answer that, I don't put my flags outside my door, they're in my office. Because I, I don't want them outside my office, they look much better in my office. And just to answer your question, I have the public upstairs all the time, we all do. We have residents come through all the time. So it's not like we're isolated, we're public servants, and we have, I have lists of meetings of people coming in every week, twice a week, sometimes more than that. So we're not just isolated in, you know, some corner upstairs. We have the public, and the public has access to the third floor. Okay. <laughs> well, they're easier Madam, to get Madam to. Madam Mayor, can yes. I respond to some yes, of please. what Council Member Fox said? And then she I want to see if anyone she, else has any She comments. did say a lot. Um, I want to reiterate that these offices are used by the public, and anyone could come to these offices, and these can be used as pictures. And again, this is a public, publicly owned facility where we would be displaying commemorative flags that is respectful for the 277,000 people that live here and gets us around, uh, and I will address the chair, Madam Chair, uh, Mayor, uh, gets us around the problem of having to decide which commemorative flags of any stripe, of any color, of any, I guess, technically non-religious basis so that was the compromise. 
So if Council Member Fox is saying that this compromise isn't acceptable, it's with her right to object, and I respect that. Um, but, you know, I'm up here to try to find a compromise, and I'm going to display all manner of flags. And I think that it's a wonderful idea to have commemorative flags, and I think that it is a more wonderful idea to respect those three flags that are governmental flags that represent laws and rules and the consent under which we are all governed. Everyone in this room has, has provided consent to the governments that are represented by those banners to be governed, to be, you know, live their life, to go through parks, to be protected, to be arrested if something goes wrong, uh, and they, 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 they violate one of those rules, to, to pay a fine. Uh, and to be protected from others and be defended from enemies and all those awesome things that govern and provide mass transportation and all those governments too. And I should probably mention, I apologize, I should have put this first, and to protect people's rights based on the laws of that state of California, based on the laws of that government. And I don't think we need a certain particular flag, how important as it may be, to prove that to anybody. And I just have to ask, since this is my substitute motion, the city attorney, I respect Council Member Fox. We work together. She's an attorney. I'm an attorney. We are not attorneys up here on this dais. So city attorney, please opine if you can. If you can't, we're off the table this. You have to opine on this 45-day thing because I am not a constitutional lawyer. I apologize, Council Member Carroll. I want to make sure I have your question right. Are you asking whether I don't know what removal? Forty-five days thing is. again. I as a compromise, I was trying to, to to save as much of Council Member Fox's motion as I could. So you do not need the forty-five days in there to preserve the legality of the motion. Well, I'm ha I'm, ha I'm I'm more than happy to take that out of your substitute. Yeah, motion. and what about the third party thing? The third, what is that? The um, Council Member, I would recommend that you leave in the language that says, that particularly the end piece of the language that says council members won't use flagpoles as, to, as the expression of a third party. Okay. Now, how it becomes the council member's personal expression, I think that's a separate question. And so if somebody asks for the display of a piece of information and that reflects your personal beliefs and you want to display that, that's one thing. But if you start using uh, the placement of a flag as a as as their expression as opposed to the government agency's expression, or in this case, an individual council member's expression, it gets to be difficult. Sounds like a bit of a quagmire, Jeff. So I, nope, I would, I'm but that's confusing. great, but I'm, I'm still willing to propose it because we've got a lot of you know interest here in displaying commemorative flags, yep. as council member has, has showed us. So council member Quo, and I, I apologize, madam, I, I, will, I will accept your friendly amendment to delete the 45 day requirement and you know, commemorative flags could be displayed as long as the member or mayor would like. Okay, so now we, uh, I wanna move to uh, other council people. I do wanna make a comment. The, the proposal to um, allow these um, flag po uh, poles to be used in our offices, to put that in the resolution, I think it is important because they cost money. They also cost money every time you wanna get a new flag or have some, com some kind of flag at different holidays, that's gonna cost the city money. So I really think it's important that it is identified in the resolution that we're making a statement, a policy statement, that we accept that to allow these commemorative flags to be flown in individual offices, but it is a cost to the city. So to not have a policy or not to have an approval by in an emotion like this, I think would not be wise um, because we could have, you know, 30 different flags by council members want to be flown, right? So I think it's important that it's in there. So I will turn to you. any other council member have any comments? Well, uh, council member, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Quo. Well, on the cost, I mean, would the co could the cost, and I know that um, I'm going to turn to Ms. Grettenberg, um, and I'm not trying to throw anyone under the bus here. When I took office, I asked for an American flag, and I was charged for the flag. And I know that we're reversing our policy on that, and I don't know that it would necessarily go into this motion, but I think the compromise is, you want the American flag, you get the American flag. You want the state flag, you get the state flag. If you want a commemorative flag, that would, the, the cost would be borne out of your office account. Well, that's, that's worthy yeah. of discussion, so. Um, Make her the motion. Or I, I don't know if that needs I, to go in the motion or. I am amenable. Maybe they should rebate you. I am Why amenable. Why are you paying for your own flag? I am amenable, but having just paid for a city of Irvine flag in my office. 
This is now at the dais, please. Thank you. So. This to me is not a problem to be dealt with, by the way. My who's, who's mumbling out there? Please stop yeah. it. Mr. Letourneau, can you please stop that? Right. You've had plenty of comments already, so. Let's turn this to um, Mrs. Grettenberg. But can yes, you share, um, is this her thank you. For speech over? Very well, very well. There you go. Yes, thank you very much. Um, when, according to Mayor Pro Tem Quo, when we originally, when he originally made his request for an American flag, um, the city did request that we um, charge his business expense account. Obviously, taking a look at things differently, which was fine. It was worth yes, it. That is correct. It was worth it. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, moving forward, we will not be charging the American flag and the city flag to that business expense account. I just think it's better to come out of the, and we just have them in the offices, so when yes. we have new council members, they would leave them there. Agreed. And then keep them there, it'd be a city expense. So maybe that's just something we've worked out here and you'll get a refund, I'm sure. So that's yes. really good. So um, did you have other comments, Council Member Quo? And Council Member Khan, did you have any comments you wanted to make? None at this time? Okay, so now we'll move back to Council Member Fox. Thank you. I just wanted to be clear that even though this is being called a compromise, there's nothing in this substitute motion which in any way uh, s creates a policy of the city of Irvine for supporting the LGBTQ community and flying the pride flag. So I, and I don't even think we really need any kind of ordinance, motion, regulation that says what or what we can't put on the walls of our office. So I think this is a bit of a circus. If you want to vote against the pride flag, then do so. But to say like, oh, we're going to hang it in our office and then we'll invite people to come in and look at it. There's no statement to the LGBTQ plus community that we are with them, that we support them. So we need to do better than that. Well, you know, we all have different opinions up here. We appreciate your opinions, and they're well received, right? But other people have different opinions that you have to respect and not grandstand as you're doing. So I would appreciate that you'd be a little bit more polite. So there's, is there any other Madam comments? Madam Mayor, there is, there is. Madam Mayor, I would like, Council Member Cook. I would just like to say that, um, you know, the council members can raise their voice all they want. And I apologize if I did during this dialogue, Council Member. Uh, Mayor, uh, Mayor Shea, if, uh, but I would say that uh, I am not voting again. I am offering a substitute motion, and I am all for commemorative flags of the members choosing and of the mayor's choosing. And if Council Member Fox wants to work on dividing the community, that's her prerogative to do that. I was put up here to be a fiduciary for 277,000 people of about 30 are here tonight, and then I cherish and love all of these people that are here on all sides of the issue. I'm gonna be working really hard to fight for these people as everybody up here, including Council Member Foxes, and I think we can kind of agree to disagree on this one. But lest, lest there be any question about tolerance or intolerance, it would be pretty intolerant to consider me to be intolerant based on this substitute motion. The truth hurts. Thank the you. Truth hurts. You may not like his comments, but we didn't laugh at you when you came up here. Please be respectful. I just would ask that you'd be respectful. You don't agree, perhaps, but you don't need to laugh and giggle. It just doesn't even fit into what your tone is tonight. So let's don't do that. Okay, so uh, if there's no other council comments or any statements at this time, we have a substitute motion on the floor. There is a motion and a second. Um, let's vote. Councilmember Fox. It's, it, they stick, so I don't know. Motion passes three to two, members Khan and Fox opposed.